Well, really, it just started. It's about an hour into the game. Uh, one of those horrible spirit storms called a Beowick, or... Yeah, I think it's Beowick. I'd hit and killed everybody, and then I'd found this dude with this crazy machine. And moved on to... Way to the town. Right. All right. See, I, I can see spirits and stuff now. <clears throat> Which is unusual, you know, I mean, people normally can't mm. see spirits, you know. Okay, uh... Since I'm not sure if I keep walking that there might be more people down let's there. Go. I'm gonna yeah, let's draw this person out. Why am I not getting any wounds or whatever it is that oh. Well there you go. Alright. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh... So, I discovered a bandit camp and turned around, like, real fast. Mm. Uh... Okay. Well, let's do our thing where we drop back. Okay, so, it's a couple of wolves. That's... Let's, let's Oh, it's three wolves, alright. I'm wondering if I'm gonna take a... Wound any... Ah, there we go. Okay, that'll speed up my attacks for a moment. I can probably... There we go. Wait a second, yeah, we heal off a little bit after that. Now, I think this guy has pretty good athletics, so, so I should be able to climb those. So the aged walls appear to have once encircled this entire glade. Only a small fragment remains, and the stairs leading to the top of the structure have crumbled away. We can scale, or we can examine... Well, let's examine it. The heavy bricks are slick with moss, presenting a hindrance to climbing, but the stones themselves seem sturdy enough. Given the right tools, one might easily reach the top, so let's, uh, let's try, you know. There are stones, but the end of your bro- oh, after short, you know. Not cool, man. Not cool at all. Um... Okay, let's just leave it be for now. Mm. Uh, looks like that's about the only thing in this area. Let's check out our map. Okay. So we got that bandit cat, which I certainly want to go mess up, you know, uh, but I'm not an idiot, so I'm going to quick save it first. The young dwarf, tending to the stew, looks up startled as he sees you approach. He drops his ladles, battering the stew across the ground. What? The bandit turns. Get him, you dogs, and make sure our new cook don't run off. Help, please, help. Ma! One of the bandits gives Tin Frith a kick as they pass him, and he huddles. Alright. Okay, so, um...
I don't know if I can do this. Let's. I'm gonna try to line of sight a bit of it. Which well, did not really work in the end. Yeah. Hell yeah. Come on, keep on smacking. Oh, yes. Well, this is, um, this is getting interesting. Let's go. Time I played this, I uh, I played as a as a monk. I'm uh, not a monk. I um thief. Uh, I usually play rogues in these these kind of games first because I've always found that it's like, oh no, you're you can't lockpick everything in the world at the beginning of the game, and you end up regretting it. Uh, uh but I just you know whatever. I wanted to. I like monks way too much. Hail traveler. Hey now. By the flame. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I'd be stuck cooking for those ignorant weasels for the rest of my life. Or until they were bored of me, I suppose. I must get back home. I only hope they haven't hired a replacement. The dwarf looks aghast. Listen, next time you're in the Gilded Vale, stop by the Blackhound Inn. I'll let Pasca know just what you've done for me, and I'm sure she'll do right by you in turn. Oh, to be back at my oven again. Yeah, uh, not not in at. Sorry, my bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, nothing like being in yeah. the oven. Okay, so that guy is somewhat late for dinner. A pair of stink cots. Uh, yep, yep. Take some veg to bowels. Sure. Uh, all righty. So. Let's see what we got left of this place. I think we've got, like, the two bad parts, but I really... I can't remember. It's been a while since I've been this part of the game, but over in here somewhere, I think there's one or two other, like, little things that we want to be careful for. Mm -hmm. I need to set up a second monitor one of these days, too. Right. Yeah. Bring my Mac over here. So I can... Check my stream. Uh, okay. Uh oh. It's a wolf. More Let's than likely, go. more than one is around here at least, if, even if it's not showing up. Alright. There we go. Alright, you got anything? Cannot save one combat. You know, I kind of keep forgetting. Um, nice Monk stealth. actually has pretty good stealth, so I mean, it is so much slower. So it's kind of like, yeah, but they can be pretty useful. Man, yeah, screw it. I'm like the wind. I'm out of my league. All right. That's right. I said it. I'm out of my own league. Okay, I could run towards Gilded Vale, but... Bear Cave! See, that's what I was talking about. I figure there's something else up here. And I bet the Bear Cave has, um... Bears. Oh, these dudes. Oh, okay, cool. Alright, I'm gonna get in the river and then I'm gonna call down Gandalf's magic horses to help me. Not Gandalf, uh, I don't remember who that was. 
I'm not a very good Lord of the Rings fan. Okay. Ready to sleep the rest. The dead. Yeah, characters. Really. Really damaged at this point. What you got, boyo? Okay. Yeah, of course that. I don't care. Let's take a look. The struts and supports are large enough to be the ribs and vertebra of a dragon. That's cool. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and use a camp. Uh, that's right, I didn't increase that last time. Uh oh. I guess I'm gonna go get murdered by a bear, so, uh, wait right here. <laughs> okay, so. Steady does it. I don't remember. Is my. Is my still pretty good? Yeah, it's a. I mean, that's. I mean, that's pretty good for a first level or second level character. What the. Oh, shit. Pardon me, bear. Let's let's go. I be oh sh oh shit, bear! No. I believe in you, bear. Don't hurt me, bear. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's not that bad though. We can we can get back from that pretty quick. I think we got a chance with the bear. Hold on, let me let me see. I think I've got some stuff. Yeah, like a heal potion or something too. Yeah. So let me throw that in my quick items. But uh, okay. Keeping quiet. You know how we keep quiet around this piece. Let's go. Ow. Let's come on, bear. I got you, bear. I got you this time, bear. Let's go. I got you this time. You can't take me, bear. Let's go. Please, please don't be able to take me, bear. Okay, awesome. Jeez. Okay, I'm not going in there until I heal up some. I only got 50% of the bear works out in my BC area? That's not cool. Uh, okay, that's right. I remember this slice, because then I get to talk to the spirit. Yeah, you see, since ever since I was in that storm or what have you, whatever they want to call it, uh, I have been able to talk to the boys here. Got a hand for the spirit. In the moment, in the contact, you feel as if you've been struck a blow. Head reeling as you tumble helplessly into a waiting darkness. The light blooms at the edges of your vision. You feel the sun at your back and the weight of a bow in your hand. You know suddenly that you have come a long way from the veil, vale, hunting deer. Now you are standing before a cavern and the darkness extends far into its depths. Even so, your friend strides out before you, his red cloak flapping at his heels. You follow, heart hammering in your chests, as he leads you deeper into the cavern. There is a roar like thunder echoing around you. Fear seizes you, casts you stumbling back towards the exit, towards light and escape. You see a glint of steel, and there's a sudden terrible flash vagging behind your knee. You scream, stumble, and fall. Your thoughts are chaos, lanced with pain, but in a moment of terrible clarity, you see your friend look back from the mouth of the cavern, his dagger daubed and crimson to match his cloak. And then there is great, dark shape above you, and then there is more pain. The vision recedes, and you are thrown back into yourself with a seemingly resentful force. The corpse lies at your feet, and the specter lingers. In the, sp in the span of energy between you both, you feel a sense of questioning confusion, of anger. 
All right. Oh, I can't carge him. I will find the man who did this to you and see him brought to justice, or you were betrayed. Only a fool couldn't see it coming, or you're dead, spirit. There's nothing for you here. I'm going to find him. I'm a justice monk. For a moment, the spirit seems to burn bright, and your head fills with a sickly triumph. The spirit seems to weaken with the force of its own exultation, growing fainter and fainter until you are alone once more. Alright. So. Let's loot. My scroll through the eye socket. And fever. Okay. In a little cave coral. Coral. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's about all. So we'll just head out this exit. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Yeah, I got you, brother. Oh, uh, it will long let me get back to see him leave. I guess I gotta head over here. Yeah. You know, if anybody was curious, I watched that new, uh, the first part of that new Stephen King miniseries that. 11, 22, 60, or whatever. Yeah, I think it's 11, 22, 60. Uh, that has, like... <coughs> I can't remember if it's, like, Netflix or Hulu, but... It has, like, um... Uh, Chris Cooper. And, um... What's his name? James Franco. And they're both, uh... They're both pretty cool in it. Let's see if I picked anything up. Okay. <laughs> I thought for sure my athletics would be enough to get up there, but um, you must I'm gather your party uh, before venturing forth. Yeah. All right, let's rock it. Cavi. Let's make sure everything's good here. All right. This is a really cool part of the game, though. It is a real fucking bummer. Like, real bummer. And why I say this, this, this thing's real creepy. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me, guys. I need a cough button. I guess I have one. You I just... must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. He glances at the gnarled, leafless monstrosity of a tree next to him. Are you mad? No wonder. This place has no damn to walk. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollow-born child? What are An you talking about? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Radric has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I didn't know that it was easy to tell. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side and inclines his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. His lordship's <sighs> wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn, just southwest of here. Doesn't even look at Ah, oh, yes. Not everyone has accepted the measures necessary to keep the village faith. Ever since Lord Radric banished the mothers of Holoborn, some have taken up arms against him. 
While he's been searching for a cure, he's been beset with frauds and opportunists. We've had ciphers, wizards, and animancers come through town, taking the Lord's coin and promising to end the curse. Lord Ladric finally decided to make an example of those who would profit from our tragedy. He points to the body of a dwarven woman. The latest was an animancer from the Vale in Republic who claimed to know techniques none of us had seen. By now, we've seen it all. Let's see. Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. Hesitate. It's important that everyone in Gildan Vale understands our rules. Keep out of... Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. That seems bad. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Ill... yeah. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Don't threaten me, little man. It is no threat, only a warning. Lone Radric will tolerate no threats to his kin or those who live upon his land. Grief will not make him more docile. He shrugs one bony shoulder. I will know more details when the messenger arrives. The vagaries of childbirth, perhaps, but that is not your concern. Does this affect? I am sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn. Or stable, for all I care. Find me afterwards. I'll find... I will know more soon enough. Fare thee well, Packer. So... I guess I can't really do it yet. Eventually you can... Um, you have to, in fact. Go talk to some of the spirits of the tree. Let's see what's going on here. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. They raise their voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. First figure raises his hand for calm. His face is farly obscured by hood, but his heightened statue stature suggests an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Uh, sounds like an alright guy to me. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, <laughs> eh? We don't need your coin. Uh everyone calm down. There's about I'm sure it's in every action. One of the other men glares at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drinking uh, or drink, but his gaze is focused. We're humble folk, but we're no fools. Not like he thinks, mocking us while he shelters in our village. We don't take to that kind of talk from foreigners, special not Adarans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fy, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! Well, I did not see that coming. I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. All right. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarreled. That's where you're wrong. So, I don't think tagging is such a good idea. Because then you'll have me to deal with.
As the three stumble away, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hoped to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. I'm glad I could help. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood, and you know the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath, it is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Uh, tell me I'm about a yourself. I'm wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. Well, all right. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious. What exactly did you find there? Have you Bielik. survived? I've heard such a thing was impossible. But it seems you either have a knack for timing or the favor of the gods. Just how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. Well, I mean, you did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. Say, so, uh, I, I heard the same thing. For just a moment, he looks as if he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief. Before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes, and he shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. And you? Uh, I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. He nods at the gnarled old tree in the center of town. His darting glance takes in the tumble-down buildings and the fallow, rock-strewn fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. You don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I should get going. As should I, given recent <clears throat> events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. So, at this point, I don't have a caster of sorts, and I know he's a caster. Um, and obviously... It's going to get harder, so let's rock this dude. Excellent. I shall follow you. Huh? Okay. Let's take a look real quick at our inventories. Do I have... He's wearing medium DR6 armor. I don't, I mean, I don't think I have anything better than that. And me... Actually, yeah. I kind of want to do that anyway. Okay. And I've still got my Cloak of Protection. I found that in the first dungeon area. Let's see here. If you follow along and do like the... Let's see, what is this?
Yeah, let's try that. That seems cool. Huh. Okay. And, you know, earlier when we were in the woods, we saved that little dwarf dude, and I think this is the inn that he works at. So we should be able to get, like, a reward here. Okay. Pasca. Hello. And welcome to the... Oh, it's you. Tinfrith told us what you did for him. Such a relief to have him back, and I can't thank you enough. Hmm. Consider yourself a favorite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms... Tinfrith said he wanted to whip up some ni something nice for you. He's already back to work in the kitchen. She laughs. So what would you like? Uh, let's see. I'd like a room, please. Certainly, you're always welcome. All right, give me one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. I had to get a little, little juice. Not like the movie Juice. Uh, yeah, alright. Sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallow tree, the creaking of its rope growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in, mile in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly her head snaps up and her eyes open, and they are empty, and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watch her. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. Okay, so we both, like, gained a level. So I'm gonna take a look at that as soon as I make sure that my cat's not dying once I hear him screaming. But he just kind of does that all the time because it's fun for him. Mitchell is a Mitchell's a strange little animal. Just for a little uh, happiness back there too, as it smells. Okay, let's take a look at our stats. So hammer, you gonna hurt him? First, let's go ahead and pop up a level of survival. Now, I, don't, I mean, lore, I kind of just want for the, the skill stuff, so I am going to do that and that. And I only have one point. So, but now I want to do that, you know? 
Uh, I could. Yeah, I don't know. That looks good to me. Okay. So this is... During combat, I can move faster or... While the monk has wounds, he or she adds a proportional fire. Oh. Torment's reach. I'm gonna... I was... I mean, I'm gonna try that, the, the, the fire one, Okay. Now, let's see what's going down. Obviously, this dude has lore out the hey, hey, hey. And... I mean, you should always, I guess, take a little bit of that, you know? That's fair. Uh, why not? And then, okay. Spells! Okay. Wow, well, that might be what I get. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do yeah the health one and binding webs. That sounds probably pretty lame, but I don't want this guy to die. Okay. Hmm. Before we go out there, let's take a quick look. Yeah, I wish we did too. Uh, anything interesting going on? As you near, you feel a vibrant history contain the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Reach out for the soul. See a woman emptying her satchel onto her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures, and herbs are scattered throughout her room, haphazardly. She bites her lip, head tilted to the side, considering. She begins to repack one item after the other. Careful deliberation undercut by shaking hands. Each item has a clearly marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. The shaking worsens as she empties it out once more, one held, hand held to her mouth. Tears eke from her eyes as she gives up all semblance of order and shoves everything she can in the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the bare house. Straightening her back, she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard and red. The gangly young elf offers his condolences, but she can't see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor to any who will listen, anyone heading out on a high tide. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck of an island, and tries not to jump. And there's this dude. Let's touch him. You see a group of young men standing around a makeshift practice target. This man stands in the middle of them, explaining the construction and use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out each part as he speaks about it and what it does. He then walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are, and takes his place about 200 feet away. He carefully lines up his shot, explaining what he's doing as he does, and lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead center, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. He smiles, walking towards the boys, talking about proper stance and how to most effectively hold a bow. A noise comes from the tree line near their practice venue, and he stops, scanning the woods. Blue eyes squinting against the sun. A shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind him. He draws an arrow and lines up the shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Loosing the arrow, he wastes no time and quickly grabs another. The boys spin, watching the arrow fly into the forest, immediately lost among the trees. There is a sudden explosive movement in the undergrowth as a deer erupts from the tree line, running across the edge of the clearing. <clears throat> the boys laugh, turning to joke with a man about his lousy shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he loses his last arrow, which flies true and strikes the deer right behind his shoulder, piercing the heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost immediately. The boys stare at the deer for a few seconds, and then slowly turn to look at the man, newfound respect in their eyes. 
He smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. Those knuckleheads. This guy's drunk. Who, another fool, come here to answer Raedric's invitation? Our great lord had my sister run out of town after the boy was born. She was the only family I'd left. Not sure where she is now. Blazes, I need another drink. Ah. Uh. So, one thing that we actually do need to Hello. do... Uh, can I see what you have for sale? So, one thing we could do is we can add party members, but that's not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for... Well... Wall, oh, what? Okay. Sell some crap. So, <clears throat> the party. We have enough to get one more adventure, and I know pretty soon uh, that there is going to be another one available, but for right now, let's take a look. Let's make us a lady. Um, we want maybe a dwarf. Dwarf lady. Hell yeah. Uh, oh. uh, we'll go with the mountain dwarf. Uh, so either a paladin or a fighter. Let's go. Let's go. I know they got the, like the. Fire. Not down or discipline barrage. I'm gonna knock down. Okay, we have points here, obviously. Okay. Yeah, but I don't want any negatives in there. That's that's fine. So. Just have we don't have any. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, or which one was my phone phone? Our large expanse of savannas, or the con uh, let's just go with the consultation one. Uh, background. 
Mm, how about mercenary? Yeah. Okay. Is there a red-headed dwarf girl in here or something? Uh, that, that one will... Uh, I don't know, whatever that one will do. Um, yeah. That's good. We'll name her after my wife's nickname if I <laughs> didn't have caps lock on. Sonky. Okay. And... Look. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure she's going to have just, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So, what we'll do is level that character. I got some points to spend. We're going to throw that. Then, yeah. Mm, okay. Rapid recovery and none of their other abilities, basic abilities. But. Okay, yeah. so I don't know. Okay, it doesn't really look like anything special there. So let's run outside. So I'm supposed to run over to the, well, this horrific tree over here. And there's just a, you know, I want to grab this. How may I help? Man, these guys just standing around in the middle of the night all the time in a rainstorm. That sucks for them. Alright, let me go talk to Kaldara. The squat distended body of an elderly elderly <laughs> The squat distended body of an elderly dwarf and woman dangles from a thin crooked bow that sags at the toe of her tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forwardly, rigidly, from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surrounding, but there's a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. So we'll reach out for her. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind and focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and, and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives you a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come, have you come oh. here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? I, I think I survived a Buick. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. I need to understand 
something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I. And it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it. Sometimes more than they were before. But usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! What did you mean, when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. You said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rimagan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die, and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence, and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What happened? She laughs, a rasping choke cackle, cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer weren't plain as a rope tied for strangling! 
allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Tell me. Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an enomancer who helped one find the other. Turned their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things. But their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. I had other questions. Of course, dear. Turns out I didn't. Farewell. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Caldera loses her, closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Hammer was granted Crucible of the Soul. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. I'm a watcher. Sarge Driver has received to it. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect that explains how you survived to be awake, huh? In any case, I appreciate your honesty since we're traveling together. It's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only they are rare and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, he coughs, as you just demonstrated. Let's continue. Hmm. <clears throat> Seventeen and a half. The smell of pipe smoke has once earthly and sweet winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair leaning against the mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. I'm sorry. The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What makes you think I was just in the door for me? 
His smirk broadens his brow arch. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radrick at first. You know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with the <coughs> cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, then there's the boners. Sorry, get a cup of another cup of juice here, guys. Just give me a second. Also, cramming a cookie into my choke hole. Oh. Hmm. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. I mean, none taken. <laughs> Good. They don't mean it personal when they hang folks here. I have to remind myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. <clears throat> Let's see. The war? Saints War. Only one in my lifetime. The fellow decides he's living an incarnation of Eothus. Overthrows Red Seraphs, marches on Darewood. So we give him a Darewood hello. What's a Darewood hello? We blew him up. Who is Eothus? God of rebirth and redemption, formerly, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different from where you're from. I had other questions. I got time. Why was your headman charged? Got involved. Radrick sent men down here the other day, said they had on good authority someone in town was working with Kolsk, plotting Radrick's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. I was coming forward, so within, so Swithin, that's my headman, he steps up and says it's him. They took him at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, not for plotting against Radric than for protecting me. What does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethus. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethus worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly. Especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Radric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Who's Kolsk? Someone who got tired of all the hangings? He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. If you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? He gives a half smile. Drinking, mostly. Point to fact. I'm on my way out, just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out here that don't think Wadewin's legacy started with Wadewin. We could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Cade Nua. 
There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. True. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. I don't know why I never thought of it before. Probably because you're a serious dumbass. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger, and a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. That's a fine reason if I ever heard one. All right then, guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. Maybe I am. Well, let's get going. <clears throat> okay, so... Huh? There's a few things. Let's take a quick look at the map. So, Black Hammer, and yeah, Good's House. I actually need to go to... standing in front of the fireplace, hung a quiet tune to herself. Or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as you enter. Good day to you. Well, finally, I was starting to think... Well, it may startle noise once she turns around. Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? Who are you expecting? My sister, Kaliska, is traveling with one of the caravans. She sent a letter before she was she came. She said she was going to pay her way by working as a guard for the caravan master. She always was a tough one. Don't so, so, suppose you've seen her on the road, or the caravan, perhaps. It's Master Odemus. Kaliska didn't make it. Offer covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments she can manage nothing but a strangled voiceless gas, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew... I told her his dangerous path to take. Kaliska was always so certain she could take on any danger. Offer sniffs. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I just... I can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Uh, Kaliska mentions she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can preside with some assistance. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't know how, if I could impose this on you, it's not a small favor. I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kaliska as much as I could, but all I know is that there for a long time now, every child born in Gildenvale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Radric, he's exiled all of them. I'm calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. With my Hathort gone, I didn't know how I'd manage if I lost my home to Hathort. Hathort. I hoped Kaliska could help me. They say Renga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn. She moved south to Ancelog's compass two seasons ago. The journey's too far for me. I can't make it as I am, but I don't have anyone else now with Kaliska gone. Please, can you help me? I'll find Ranga for you. Offer blinks eyes wide. You will? Oh, gods bless you. Here, I'll give you coin to pay her with. You needn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions out of. Well, I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. Ancelog's compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. Thank you again. Truly, you'll be saving both of us. Uh, saving us both. Huh? Oh, yeah. What's up, kitty?
Okay. you do? Let's know more about the Black Hound. Really? Well, let me see. The actual building's been here for years, but the Black Hound's fairly new. We got a lot of new faces in here, too. But fewer than we used to, I'll admit. Tinfrist's the big draw. I'm sure we'll get the big crowds back again in no time. I used to work the tables, actually, until the old owner up and left. Nobody's sure what happened to him. He even left his poor hound behind. That's the name, see? The Black Hound is still sitting upstairs, pining after him. Poor old girl. Well, they send it up in my hand somehow. My very own inn. A lot of hard work involved, but it's been worth it so far. Please sit where you would like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much by the way of a good meal today. Unless you're fond of cold porridge. Oh, oop, actually I wanted to say about the... I'd like a room. Okay. Okay. I should have went upstairs. Now that I think about it, let me go back in there. Yeah, I know. Okay. Hey, yeah, I forgot about this too. Ah, it's you, my savior. So good to be back. I don't think I will let this go unrewarded. I've decided that you have earned the right to learn one of my most closely guarded secrets, my dearest recipe. After this, you will eat nothing else. Oh, and some savory pie recipe. Savory pie to keep you hale and hearty. May it serve you well in your travels. Alright, dude. But what I really want to do is I want to run, uh, I want to run upstairs. Hey, we said we wouldn't mention Thane. Okay, whatever. Okay, so... Tiny bite marks. The sound stares tightly at the covered window, head cocked as if waiting to hear a particular sound. Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl, I don't think he's coming back. Oh, you can come with me. Maybe we'll find him on the way. I got a, I got a dog in my inventory now, so I'll take that. I'll reach some touch some souls. See a long, empty road cutting through two large crop fields. The air is silent and the land too still for early afternoon. This woman walks slowly on the road, leading a horse, cautiously looking around. She seems to sense something wrong, but is unable to discern what it is. She stops, sniffing at the air, her nose high, her brows crinkled, and, her ca and she casts about, looking for something. The air is clean. No clouds. She sniffs again, still looking around, confusion clouding her face, mouthing a single word. Fire? She looks out across the fields, her confusion turned into fear. She holds her hand up to block the sun from her eyes and scans the fields again. Not finding what she was looking for, she jumps onto her horse's back, the fear quickly becoming panic. 
She kicks, sending the horse shooting down the path, which bends around some trees to where the farmhouse should be. She pulls up short, horror now in residence on her face as she stares at the burned and charred mess that used to be her family's home. Tears well in her eyes as she kicks again, racing to the rubble. Alright, so <clears throat> that was her. Let's see what old, old Jimbo here. Uh, Shane shakes Morian. See an emaciated boy in chains, black holes for eyes, staring sightlessly at a wall. A man in a dark coat walks in, a scroll and an oddly shaped quill in his hand. The boy glances at him expressionless, a corpse waiting for animation. A man clucks at him, disapproval clear at his tone. The boy stands, limbs hanging. The man takes the quill and begins to ride on the boy's chest, copying sharp, angular symbols from the scroll. The child doesn't flinch as the quill digs into his skin, drawing blood as it goes. The wizard finishes with a flourish and barks some arcane command, setting the symbols to glow dully. The boy cries out, knees hitting the stone hard, his chest burning, black and red. Finally, the glow disappears, leaving only hard black scars etched into his skin. He slumps sideways, twitching, eyes facing the back of his skull. The wizard grunts, kicking him on the leg on his way out. The boy lies on the floor until dawn, eyes still black like holes. The twitches grow into convulsive shakes. And this guy. <clears throat> this is Deslock Najatep. Oh, Deslock. You. You see a man soar through the air, hitting a nearby wall with a nauseating crunch. He doesn't get up. His attacker, a burly, clean cut warrior with a carnivorous grin, turns and shoves his fist into the stomach of another assailant, removing another from the impromptu brawl. The bar is a whirlwind of elbows, knees, fists, and feet with no end in sight, and he is in his element. In the corner, three smaller men speak quietly, throwing malicious glances at the larger man in the center. He breaks a chair over a tattooed head, cackling. The trio position themselves in three parts of the room, and with a terse nod they charge. Unfortunately for them, the man sees them coming. Something in his eyes burns brightly, and all three slump to the ground in an agony that's all in their minds. The burly man bows to a room of then unconscious and inca incapacitated before sauntering out. Off key whistle trailing behind him. Okay, so those guys did some stuff. Who's this fella? I'll see what I can do. Your creepy shit. You know, the huge. to the smythe. one of these soul touchers. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You see a group of ventures surrounded by a crowd of attacking Zarps. This man is with them, seemingly unconcerned by the battle, even detached from it as he stands in the middle of his comrades. Chanting, his expression bordering on elation, his voice is powerful and deep, booming out across the combatants as a rich counterpoint to the chaos of their fighting. With every phrase, the battlefield changes. His allies glow with a pulsing blue light, freezing the Zarps that surround them. 
<clears throat> a blazing pyre erupts from the ground, cutting and burning the creatures and sending them scattering. One of the fallen Zarp suddenly explodes as three giant grubs crawl from his corpse and attack the remaining enemies. Man continues to chant, thoroughly enthralled in the joy of the moment. Finally, the creature has been reduced to one. His allies stand back as the man approaches, still chanting. He removes his hammer and swings it at the Zarp. His phrase ends as the hammer connects with his head, punctuating the spell and bringing his song to an end. That's kind of awesome. What's this dude all about? <clears throat> you see a man crouching, superstitious and alone. A series of untamed shrubs, all that hide him from the vision ahead. His eyes are locked on a Delimgan, beautiful and terrible, eyes half lidded as she hums. A bird with a fantastic blue and orange plumage sits on her shoulder. Look at the plumage. Trilling gently as the man is entranced. Trembling tentative, he stands, and the tranquility is broken with a bird's startled squawk. The Delimgan half smiles, beckoning with twig like fingers. She does not speak as he approaches. His mouth is dripping sounds of awe and admiration. She waits, coy and tempting, with agonizing slowness he is before her. Then something changes. She sees something hanging limply from his side and begins hanging limply from his side and begins to hiss. Fingers suddenly claws and eyes black with hate. He has no time to reach for his axe or grimoire as, he, as she strikes. And just as soon as she strikes, she is gone. The only evidence of her existence is the shuddering wreck on the ground. He grabs at his grimoire, nevertheless, and begins to chant with the words, words of magical language of his own imagining, scribbled in a maniacal shorthand, ring hollow. The silence continues unabated. He turns and shrugs at someone or something, but if there is something there, you do not see it. This Amois man is an impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast corded muscles. Small ears frame a square-jawed face, coated in smeared soot and arcing black tattoos alike. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome. You're the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Is this your shop? That it is. Been here near on 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. Tuatana glances at the guard standing watch along the wall. But the black hammer smithery remains. What do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. Stock's not what it used to be, but we find weapons and armor to offer yet. All forged right here at the Black Hammer. What happened? We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near on a week now and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. Or my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe to make some coin. Tuatana snorts. As if that lot would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situation of villages like this and the exodus to the cities has created far too many opportunities for the unscrupulous sorts. Tuatana scratches his jaw, thinking, If you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. They'd be cutting through the Black Meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. As it is, most of our weapons go to His Grace Lord Radric. Tuatana glances at the nearby guard. And that's as it should be. But it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. I'll see them back safe and sound. I'd appreciate your trying anyhow. You bring back the supplies at least, and I'll have much more to offer you. A discount to start, and if you do find my workers, you give them a good smack upside the head for me. I see you he's do. got anything. See his wares here. Well, of course. You won't find finer anywhere. <laughs> Alright, let's see if he really does have anything I want. Uh, he does. Well, I mean, come on. So, disengagement defense bonus. This spell is. Uh, oh, a pierce and slash uh, damage uh, reduction. Oh, ring of protection. Uh, fortitude plus five reflex. Uh, oh, man. Ring of Deflection. Nice. Uh, I do need to go ahead and grab three camping supplies. 
Okay, that's cool. So we have that class to check out. Huh? Who are all these guys? Oh, no, no. I'm not gonna steal anything. We have that quest. We're still looking for. So let's go peek around town a little bit more before we're heading out into the wilderness and get into the like exciting part. Okay. And we're good. This man and woman appeared to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bulging satchels. They move to embrace until the woman notices you approach and pauses, her smile faltering a little. How do you do? Can we help you? She looks to her companion, brows furrowing with confusion. Yeah, my dude's, uh, that's him. Do you know this man, Nanton? I don't believe so. Was there something you wanted, stranger? That cloak. I've seen it before. You killed that man in the cave. Are you accusing him of something? Engrid looks to Nantan, touching his arm. This is about the accident. We're both grieving Perley's loss, but it was a wild animal's doing. Nantan shakes his head and minutely you see a tremble in his hands. What would you why what would make you suggest such a thing? I had a vision in the cave. I saw Perley's last moments as he lived them. I saw you cut him with a knife. That's that's not possible. Nantan stares at you. How could you possibly know? His hand falls to his sword belt. I left no sign. Nanton, wait! Ingrid raises a hand. I don't know what you saw in the cave, but this isn't what you think. Pearly, my husband, he was as much as a beast as that bear. I tried to leave the first time I suffered his temper, but he wouldn't have it. Nanton, he... We met and knew he'd found someone special, someone kind, who cared for me. Please, all we want is to leave this place, to start somewhere else. We... She looks down at the satchels. We have some coins saved up. You could have it if only you let us go. I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody's uh, watching at the moment. But if you are, well, what would you do? I think it's only me. What would you do, Matt? If, say, for instance, you knew somebody uh, killed somebody. But they say that the guy they killed was a, a horrible person, but there's this person's spirit wants revenge. Hmm. I mean, you know, obviously murders against the law, so Yeah. Uh yeah, see, I can I can take them to the cops, or I can attack them, or I can leave them, or I can tell them to just run. Hmm. Uh, he's a a monk. That's a good point. I'll take them to the magistrate. I don't know what you think you tell the magistrate in order about your dream. You won't take this from us. Not when we're so close and not from that wretched pearly. He draws his blade. Come on, dude. You don't want to do that. We're going to beat you until you cry blood. Huh. Apparently he do want that. I'm not even going to get the wizard involved. Um... Okay. 
No, I'm gonna get a deflection, that's nice. Hmm. What is that? Ah, it's just lore stuff. Huh? There's more grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards comes through that door and gets a shot between the eyes. Gods, hear me. Swainer, I'll put you down like a dog. Come away for now, lads. But we'll be back, Trumbull. And we'll have fair prices, or by the flame we'll have a reckoning. You know. Elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn, his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. Miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back if you value your life. Hold on. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Miller hesitates and lowers the club. Wait, I know you. You just came into town, right? Don't tell me Swainer's already got his claws in you. Gods, that's all I need. <clears throat> Thought you could use some help. Those people out there seem pretty angry. Really? Highly as tits. Could I use a friendly face? I take it you heard some part of what the crowd's asking for? Grain. Except for I've got it all tucked away somewhere. Swainer's been egging that lot on for days now. They've been cleaving keeping clear so far, but things like this keep going on like they are. I, I don't know how much longer we've got before these things get messy. Please, if you're here, not here on his behalf, maybe you could speak to Swain. Huh? He won't listen to me anymore. Just explain that we're all getting smaller rations now. We're all making sacrifices. I'll go see what I can do. I'd be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore, and maybe you'll have better luck. Tell him we're all having a hard time of it, and we'll all have to make some sacrifices. We'll be in your debt for it, if you can convince him. Hmm. Sure. Well met, friend. Don't know who you know, know who you are and don't much care. Keep walking. We're not here to chat with foreigners. Careful. Looks like they're cut from the same cloth as those rowdies who attacked me. Smells like it, too. Oh, I'd bet he has all nobility that tremble. Two big strong kids, pure soul and all a gilded veil. The door sneers. 
cowards sending out messengers to handle this business. We can go and tell him we haven't had a solid meal in days on account of him, and we can't afford a good drink on account of him. We won't be bullied by some foreigner on account of him. Fair enough, you bring us something to wet our throats, it might be all fueled up to trade in words. Huh? Well met, friend. Mm, buy some drinks. Go back to Jib Jab over here and see what's shaking. Welcome. Okay, I'd be happy for a mug of the Blackhound shit beer. Gods, that's good. Alright, then you got my attention. What does he got to say is worth around of drinks? You're right. Things going like they are. We're just gonna hang up in that tree out there. Tell Trumbull we'll leave him be. Don't know what we'll do now. The crop's failing. Got another trade. Think Pasco needs a hand around the end? Yeah. So that's good, we'll go. It's always good to resolve things in a friendly manner. Though I do enjoy the punchy manner as well. Back, if you had any luck with Swainer? I spoke to Swainer. What did he say? I've been to leave him convinced him to leave your family in peace. Why that's that's great news. I wasn't sure you'd get through to him. Out of their minds with drink half the time. That's a good experience. Oh you a great debt here. He pulls the coin purse from his hip and pushes it towards you. Today's earnings to show my appreciation. And you'll be sure to help. I'll let everyone know. Alright. Glad to help. That's your... Huh? Alright. Right. Alright. So. Uh...